All right, so identifying a roof leak, we got called out to look for a leak here in this property. I was told it was kind of near a bathroom in there um, where that second story goes up. It's always a good idea if you can get in to get in to look at it, assuming you live there, that's no problem. If you don't, like here, it's a rental, I've got to gain access by the tenants or the property manager. So you go in, you find the location, and if not, do your best to just have an idea of where the leak is. Also, having an idea of the weather patterns when the leak was noticed is another good thing. So where I found the leak to be, if you go inside the house, you can mark it by looking out that two-story window near us this way, uh, about four or five feet, which is gonna be about that wall area. When you go in just under a header in the first floor, that's where the leak was spotted, just about off to the right side of that window right there. So there's a few things that are in the area. You got a chimney above that could be bad or have an issue water running down and leaking in and dropping off. You've got a damper vent for a bathroom and a utility soil vent pipe. So there's probably a bathroom located in there. I was able to go into the upstairs. There's nothing, no water damage in the second story. It's the first floor. So that kind of tells me some of those things are out. The flue pipe, or the furnace, not the furnace pipe, but the vent pipe actually goes in through the exterior wall right there and it probably bends off somewhere to go into the sewer to vent. So that's where my attention is drawn as well as possibly the wall right there. So we're gonna look at a few things and try to figure out what the issue might be to help you think of some things to look for if you've got a leak with a similar setup or just the more knowledge you have in the head, the easier it is to probably identify the leak. So that's why I'm shooting this for you. I'll edit parts of this out because I got to put the GoPro on and make a transition jumping up there. So we're going to do that right now. Also, a few other things in the video. If you think it's the vent pipe, which is what I think it is, the actual flashing to it, we'll address that. But if it is water going in the vent pipe and running over, could be coming out of a cracked or a bad uh, joint, a PVC pipe or something. I've seen in the past where a negative pocket of water condensation gathers and then it freezes on a cold day like it is today and it can actually crack the pipe. So that's another thing. What you're gonna to wanna to do is actually cap that off. They make these things right here, which work good, but there's a downside. I hate having to have tools on a roof, especially when you're up on something like that. So I'm gonna show you a sneak peek at what's to come in 2021. One of uh, Grand Roofing's patents is this guy right here. We're in the process of manufacturing, but I'll show you how simple this is as well. And a little teaser video. I'll plug a card up here. Just during the whole pandemic shutdown, I was bored at home and we we're just hanging out and I have my brother and nephew out. We just decided to make a little video. So check that card out too. But let's get into this repair inspection and then I'll submit a request or a uh, an estimate for repair. And it's up to them if they want to approve it, use this or not. But you guys get a benefit from this quick walkthrough inspection. So we're on the first floor. Before we jump up to look at this, I'm gonna show you a couple things here. Depending upon the weather patterns, you could have had a strong blowing storm out of the south and blown to the north. You have a little bit of an overhang, but you get some areas where water could be hitting this. So you wanna check out the flashing in this area. Anytime you have a J channel piece like this, if anything hits it, it's gonna slope downhill whichever direction it may be. In this case, it's gonna come out here. That one's sloping down, it's gonna come out here. My uh, key in my pocket went off. Uh, so, proper flashing. This is a steel step flash. I'm not a fan of steel, it rusts over time, but that's not my complaint. My complaint is you don't use step flashing on a wall. You use wall flashing. So you can either take a piece of coil stock, whatever material, some people hate that I use aluminum, some people swear by steel, I'm not a fan of it. It's your personal preference. But bend a piece, a large piece. It's gonna go up. It's gonna go up adequately high enough behind the J-channel. One of these, if you look, it's cut down to the point where it's not even, I think it was over here maybe a little bit. Uh, it was one of these, it was barely protruding up. So if it flips forward, rain's uh, gonna go in. But more importantly, if you look here, see this negative dip, it, it kind of drops down that way. Any water on here is now gonna flow back into the dip and right in between these two seams, it's gonna get stuck and it could go in there. Same with this one. And there's another little negative dip right here. So. Those could potentially be issues, but with my experience, although it's not done right, that's not the leak. We're gonna go up here, check this out. So the chimney, again, I'm not a fan of tar. You get areas that will crack and water can run down and get in. This is just kind of a mess. But again, my experience, it's not coming in here and running and dropping off. Otherwise you'd see it in the two-story ceiling. You're only seeing the leak in the first floor ceiling. So I'm gonna eliminate this and this. I guess that slightly could if it's got uh, some kind of 
area it's following the tube in. But my experience again, although that is bad, it needs to be repaired. The issue is going to be the pipe boot here. A uh, little bonus tip if you're a homeowner, it's important to trim your trees back if they're growing into your roof. It's going to start eating this stuff up, tearing it up. Uh, could have been actually knocked some off over there. You can see how it is uh, rubbing this. So just trim your stuff back. Quick disclaimer, be careful if you're up on your roof doing it. If you don't feel comfortable and not safe, contact a qualified tree service company or a roofer to get up on your roof and trim the stuff back. So, with this, I would recommend removing the shingles, at least this one, putting a new one in. This here has a big crack right here. It's torn. Uh, it's got a butt joint right here where they actually went, looks, yeah, just a butt joint. That's bad. So any water that could be coming in this is could be coming over, so that could be the issue. That's actually a pretty big problem right here. The seal looks good. The pipe, although I'm not a fan of plastic, you can't tell up here when they nailed it, it could have cracked it. Also, you got to be cautious. Some different plastics can actually be eaten up with different types of caulking and sealers, so just be aware of that and the manufacturer's recommendations. Oh, uh, water, if it could be coming in in this crack here, could be getting near the butt joint. Again, I don't think that is the case. I think the water is coming in right around the pipe or even in the pipe going down and leaking out. So to the actual uh, pipe caps, you can't cap this because if you do, and you flush a toilet or a tub or laundry, it's not gonna have the air suction. It could suck your P-traps dry. These are currently on the market right here. They're made to actually just set up on your vent here. But you gotta kinda center a little bit so you get it on there the right way. Then you gotta have tools with you to screw these in and they pinch the exterior of your pipe boot. What it does is rain will divert. It allows air to vent through. You don't get birds and debris going down in there and leaves cracking it because it typically reduces again. They're very affordable. Box stores have them, roofing supply places, Amazon have them. Um, but I was tired of having to bring tools up and run them back down to the truck because you got the wrong tool. Because these typically are a quarter inch or a five sixteenths or a star, a Phillips a bit, a Comet. I just was tired of it. And if you follow the channel along and bean counter Dave and I try to solve everyday problems and some of our other ventures we do aside of investing. And I was like, you know what, one day this sucks. I need to come up with a simple solution. So I prototyped it, printed out on a 3D printer and it works really good. We're going to show you on this, although this is a PVC three inch, it's a little snug, although it does work. You need to be aware of PVC shoving it down. But uh, I guess the point of me talking to you about this, it's something that we have, uh, patent pending on manufacturing is coming should be on the market in 2021 springtime sometime and uh, just another way of investing so if you guys watch this and you like to follow along on the channel you common uh, uh, usual followers subscribers if you want to see more of this kind of content what we do with our money let me know uh, so yeah anyway also by the way let's have a different type of giveaway anyone interested in actually getting one of our prototypes this is version 4 I actually threw it off my roof and it cracked because the 3D printed layers in there still functions. But if you want to have a little paperweight desktop talking piece, let me know. Give me a comment. Let me know. We could probably do some sort of giveaway with this. I'll probably keep it to the US though so I can put this in a little bitty flat rate shipping box. If you have any desire, let me know. This is a hard shell ABS. This is a TPU. It's designed to print. It's two pieces. Actually, I don't want to pull it right now. It'll snap it. But when it's manufactured, it's going to be an over mold. So to install this, basically all you got to do, although it is a smaller three inch PVC, these tapers will twist in. And I got to be somewhat careful because I did crack it. As you push down, you twist. Those fins go in, will collapse and twist around while twisting counterclockwise and it locks on. There's some stoppers under there that does not let it go down all the way. Yet it vents. So you can see it'll still vent up under there and it's held on. It's not going anywhere. It's really designed for the four inch cast irons, but it does fit three inch. Just be aware if you're doing PVC, they typically go down and over. So one downside to it. But anyway, I hope you like it. Let me know. Like I said, if you have any desire to possibly actually obtain a prototype for a talking piece, 
and you can uh, follow along with Grand Roofing and say, yep, I'm a supporter of the channel. We greatly appreciate it. Speaking of support of the channel, give us a thumbs up. It really helps YouTube algorithm. Comment down below. I'll do my best to answer if you have any questions or just say, hey, shout out to uh, you guys. I love what you do. We really appreciate that so we can keep doing this and sharing the value and the info for everyone else. Until next time, be safe and see you guys then.